Hi guys, my name is Emma and Brittany asked me to come here and talk to you guys about boudoir photography. So a little bit about me, I definitely didn't start out photography thinking that I'd be doing majority of my work as boudoir photography for sure. I thought I would just be doing weddings from all my life and maybe some seniors, things like that. I definitely didn't get into this thinking, I want to shoot boudoir. I didn't even probably know what boudoir was if I'm being 100% honest with you. <laughs> But one of my brides came to me at one point and she said, hey, can you shoot a boudoir session for me? And I said, I don't know how to do that yet, <laughs> but I'm going to learn because I wanted to be able to serve my brides in another way. So maybe you are looking to start getting into weddings and maybe you're not. Maybe you just want to shoot boudoir or maybe you don't even know if that's something that you want to do at this point. But I feel like everyone gets at least one boudoir inquiry in their time of being a photographer. So hopefully these tips that I'm going to share with you today are helpful for you and they make you feel confident when and if that time comes that you decide to shoot a boudoir session. So like I said, I started out shooting weddings and seniors. I've been doing photography for about three or so years now, and I've been shooting boudoir for about two years. And lately we moved to a new town. My boudoir inquiry started picking up. I started doing more sessions. And right now I shoot about two to three sessions per week. So that's definitely not something that I had planned for my business, but I couldn't be happier about it. Everybody shoots boudoir for a different reason. Just like everybody does a boudoir session for a different reason. I guess I went into photography kind of believing that like boudoir was just about like these sexy pictures that some women want to give to somebody for maybe their anniversary or for their wedding, things like that. But there's so many different ways that you can do boudoir photography and I have really started to shift my business into being more of like just to empower women. So like when they do a boudoir session with me, a lot of them choose to do it just for themselves and they feel really empowered and really great about themselves after their session. So I feel like it's a really rewarding aspect of my job and I really enjoy it and I hope that you do too and if you choose to get into it. So if you wanna get started with boudoir and you just really don't have any idea on where to start, hi, hello, that was me. <laughs> I think that one of the greatest things that you can do is do a boudoir session yourself so that you can kind of understand what that experience is like, what you wish that you would have known, what you did know, what you did experience, things that you want to change, etc, etc. But if you are not interested in that, that's totally fine. I get it. <laughs> you can grab my boudoir for beginners book. It's 100% free and we'll link it right here for you. There's totally like a bunch of advice in there, probably 12, 15 pages worth of really good tips that I wanted to know when I started shooting boudoir. There's all these posing tips in there, lingerie tips, all the, all the good stuff that you need to know before you get into shooting boudoir. And I also have a free posing prompt guide. So these are actual things that I say during my boudoir sessions. So I hope that they are both helpful resources to you. And I also have a light and airy boudoir photographer group on Facebook that you are welcome to join. It's free to anybody. So if you want to start shooting boudoir, but you have absolutely no idea where to start, I'm going to be giving you my top five tips today on how to shoot your first boudoir session. So to shoot a boudoir session, you're going to need a model. So my first tip is how to find that model. <laughs> so maybe you're like me and you had a bride come to you asking you um, if you would shoot this session for them. And maybe you haven't, and maybe you just want to start somewhere. I would recommend shooting it with somebody that you know. You're going to be, I mean, obviously a little bit nervous to do something that you've never done before. And that's okay. That's totally understandable. I would shoot this session though with somebody that you know. Maybe it's a friend that you can ask. Maybe it's even a photographer friend that is local that kind of gets it. Like they know you need a model for your pictures. You need a model and they're, they're totally cool with that. Go ahead, practice with me. Maybe it's somebody in your family that's getting married. Maybe you have a cousin that's getting married and would love to do this. Maybe you have a, a couple of brides and you could 
reach out to one of them and ask, would you want to do this? You know, and I'll give you those digitals for free from your session. Um, I always find that it's best to tell people what they're going to get from doing something for you. So you want to make sure and give them something back too. So maybe offer them, you know, free digitals from their session. Something that's not going to cost you money necessarily, but it's going to be something that's nice and a way to say thank you for doing this thing for me. Another thing is if you want to be able to use these to advertise future boudoir sessions, you want to make sure and get them to sign a model release because if they don't sign that model release, you're not going to be able to use those images online anywhere. So make sure that they understand that from the very beginning that they're going to need to sign a model release for their images. So make sure that they understand that if that is your intention. Make sure that they understand from the very beginning. Don't shoot their session until you have that model release because you could shoot the entire thing and then they change their mind and then they don't let you post your images and now you don't have those images anymore. So you definitely want to be sure if that is your intention to use these pictures for marketing make sure and get that model release signed first i bought the one from i want to say i bought it from the legal page law tog has some really great ones too um, but make sure that you have some sort of model release signed if that's your intention to do so my second tip is on how to make this an experience for them so i kind of like to think of this as a luxurious restaurant experience you know we're gonna go out to eat we're gonna want to have a great experience while we're there too we want the waiter to keep our water full we want a smile when we come order food you know we want to make sure that our food is done the way we want it right like we're not going out to eat just to eat we want the experience too and that is a lot of the same with boudoir so they want the nice pictures but they also want to have a great experience with you while they're at it they want you know to have some music playing while they're there they want to make sure that the temperature is right for them these women aren't wearing a lot of clothing typically usually they're just wearing lingerie um, so you want to make sure that it's like a little bit on the warmer side for their session you want to make sure that um, you have your windows covered right so that your creepy neighbor isn't looking in the window <laughs> you know um, you want to make sure and have all of these things thought out to make it a great experience for them so here are some things that I do with my experience to make it even better than they expected so I always make sure that I'm playing music for them. Sometimes I'll ask them what their favorite kind of music is. A lot of the times they will tell me that they don't care or they don't really have a favorite kind. So I just have a playlist that I play on a Bluetooth speaker for them. I always provide mimosas and snacks for my boudoir session so that they're not thirsty or hungry. I also have water, by the way. <laughs> we have water too. I always make sure and lift them up with positive, encouraging messages. And I always give them a handwritten thank you note when the session is over. I just feel like those kind of things go a long way. And I've been doing them since the beginning of my business. And a lot of people have given me referrals. And I think that having a great experience goes hand hand in hand with all of that. Another thing that you can do to make their experience better for them is to send lots of prep guides kind of things. So you can send them a guide on where to buy lingerie. You can send them a guide on like what kind of lingerie to buy, what to do, what not to do for your session. And we're going to get into that in a little bit here. My third tip is for posing. So when you're posing somebody, you don't have to make it complicated. I give you permission right now. Don't make your posing complicated. Don't pull up, you know, this big Pinterest list and try and check off every single one of these really complex poses on there. It just doesn't work like that. And you're going to be shooting for like four hours. Who wants to do that? <laughs> you're going to be exhausted. So is your model. So don't do that. Um, but instead, I would recommend having a little cheat sheet written up. You can write it on a little notepad and just keep it on a little uh, table during your session. And, you know, you can just go down your little list and check off things as you go if you want to. But I don't think that it's a bad idea to have a cheat sheet especially your first couple of times while you're doing a boudoir session. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. 
So if you need help with posing, you're going to want to download that beginning boudoir ebook that I have. Um, I'm sure it's linked right down here for you, but it, it is so helpful with getting some really simple beginner poses. Don't overthink posing, you guys. Posing is huge. It is huge for boudoir, but you don't want to be doing like all these poses that are going to like exhaust your client. You want to make sure and do um, more simplified ones and transition and flow throughout things so that your client isn't, you know, having to go take some Tylenol after the session. They're so exhausted. They are going to probably be tired because you know, everyone is. If you went to a yoga session after you haven't done yoga forever, you know what I'm talking about. You're tired by the end of that. But um, so it's kind of the same idea with boudoir. We are stretching our bodies in different ways that we aren't normally moving them around, but they shouldn't be exhausted from all these complex like Pinterest poses. So um, simple poses, yes, complex poses, maybe a couple in there, <laughs> but you're gonna find a nice beginning list um, on that beginning boudoir ebook. So you can download that and find a nice little list there. So my fourth tip for you would be that you can shoot boudoir anywhere. And I mean it, anywhere. You don't have to start shooting in a studio to feel like a legit boudoir photographer. I started in my own living room. <laughs> Honestly, I moved the sofa out of there. I moved the chair out. I got a blow up mattress and I put it on the floor and I got a comforter and put it on top of that and five little throw pillows. And I called it my studio at that point. Um, you don't have to have some big fancy setup. You can shoot in your master bedroom. You can shoot in their master bedroom. You can shoot in an Airbnb. You can shoot in a hotel. You can rent an, a studio hourly even if you want to, but you don't have to have some big, beautiful setup because it's really not the focus of boudoir. So don't get discouraged if you feel like you need to have a studio and you don't have one because that's just not true. You can start shooting boudoir anywhere. Um, a lot of people even shoot boudoir outside. That's not something that I personally choose to do, but um, some people, that's their style and that's what they like to do. So you don't have to feel discouraged if you don't have a studio space. I'm giving you permission right now. You can shoot boudoir in your house, in their house, anywhere you want. So that's tip number four, you can shoot boudoir anywhere. Tip number five is that you need to be confident, okay? So if you are confident, they're gonna feel that and they're gonna be confident. And a lot of boudoir is really based around confidence. You don't want anyone coming out of their session feeling nervous about their pictures. You don't, you don't wanna be nervous about their pictures, <laughs> even if you are feeling a little bit hesitant about things or you are feeling a little bit nervous, it's okay. Just acknowledge those nerves and feel confident going into it, okay? So what can we do to make ourselves feel confident? You're gonna to wanna to make sure and do your research Get some education on boudoir. You're going to want to make sure and know what it takes to go shoot this session. So that's why I said I think it's not a bad idea to do your own boudoir session if you really want to kind of know what that feels like because you're going to know, um, hey, I really wish I would have gotten a prep guide before I shot that, you know, went in to shoot this session with this photographer or hey, I didn't even know where to go before my session because they didn't even tell me their address. So you're gonna make sure and include those things in the future because we want to make people feel loved and included and that they know what's going on before their session even starts. So you can, you can learn it that way or you can just think through it in your head. So what are some things that I need to know you know, if I was in their shoes coming to shoot this boudoir session when I've never done one before. So what I do personally is I send them a what not to do and a what to do guide before their session. And a lot of those things look like what to pack, what to bring, what to do the day before, things like that. A lot of those tips I just kind of thought through everything that I would need to know personally if it was me doing a boudoir session. So what kind of things do they need to know? A lot of ladies are going to worry about, you know, maybe they want to shave their legs or have like waxing done or something like that. I always warn my people, 
don't get a wax the day of your boudoir session because your skin's gonna be bright red, you know? Um, I always tell them not to do a spray tan like that day because it's not gonna work, you know, things like that. I always let them know about all of that. I always tell them drink some water the day before, you know, bring these things with you, things like that. They're going to appreciate that um, knowledge that you're sharing with them so much and it's going to help them feel confident and you're also going to feel confident because you feel prepared to shoot this. So I have a lot of those tips in that beginning boudoir guide again um, so you can download that if you want to. Um, and then you're also going to want to make sure and use a confident tone while you're conducting their session. So you're going to want to make sure and not say like the word kinda or sorta or maybe while you're directing them on how to pose. Instead, it just sounds a lot better if you say you're going to put your right hand on your right hip and then shift your weight onto your left foot. You know, things like that are going to help them feel so much more confident while you're talking them through each pose. And that's why that posing list, I think, will really help you guys know what to do while you're going into your first boudoir session. So I hope that those tips are helpful for you. And if you have any questions at all, I'd love to see you in my Light and Airy Boudoir Photographers group on Facebook. And you can ask any question that you have as you get started on your boudoir journey. So it was really nice to talk to you guys today. And I can't wait to see um, all the progress that you guys make. Bye.